I'm out here today with one of my best friends in the world. This is my buddy Wes, and he's trying to sell me on the merits of saddle hunting. He's gonna demonstrate using this kit from Tethered, show us how to set it up in the tree, and how to hunt out of it. Let's go. Tethered Phantom is the saddle I hunt in. Tethered is a manufacturer. Phantom is the saddle. They have mole straps all the way around. You can put your bags on, you can put your hooks on. Um, there's several other companies that make them. What's nice about these is they have this comfort channel here, so you can adjust your line to sit in any of those channels and it adds pressure either under your hips or on your back, which I like. So all you do, step in, you got your belt, clip your belt, give it a little tug, then with tethered, you go orange hook to orange strap, you go orange hook to orange strap. It's on. It's that quick. Put it on. Um, and then we go up the tree. These are knee pads. Everyone sells knee pads for them. These are super nice because when you're relaxing and you're in a hunt for hours and you want to give your body a rest or whatever, you can relax your, your body and put your knees against the tree. So you're literally leaning up against the tree like that. And you can use these to angle yourself around the tree as well. So you can see there's all bark caught up in mine from, from hunting in them. But these are a must when you're saddle hunting. So don't leave out the knee pads. First step, I have four sticks. <clears throat> I hang two sticks from the ground so I don't have to physically be connected to the tree to hang the first two steps. So you always want to hang your first step to where you can get a leg up on the first step. Another thing you always want to pay attention to when you're hunting out of a saddle is, is the lay of the tree. So if you come over here and you look up the tree, it lays towards me, okay? Uh -huh. You never want to climb on the side where it's going that way because when you get in the saddle, you'll be laying against the tree. Gravity wants to take you away from the tree, right? So you always want your platform, which John has in his hand, against the lean at the very top. So that means we want to climb. You don't ever want your platform directly above your sticks either. You want them offset to the left or right. I always put mine to the right. I'm left-handed, I'm just more comfortable with that. Someone may want to put their platform off to the left. I always put my platform off to the right. So what I would do with this tree leaning this way, my sticks are going on this side of the tree, so I can climb up, put my platform on that, and gravity takes me. So, these are called Skeletor Sticks by Tethered. What I like about the Skeletor Sticks by Tethered is they connect really easily together. I only have one. There's four that come in a kit. But they also use what we call Amsteel, which is super thin, super light, unbelievably strong cord. Um, so, put that on the tree, lean against it. I can get the dang rope. Okay. The reason I like these tethered skeletons is just this right here. It's got a little cleat. Instead of a buckle on a traditional stick, you got a cleat. You go around once, twice, you go up, down, up, down. And then I do one little um, half hitch. Pull the steps out. This is the most important step with these sticks, especially using AMSA, you pull out on the bottom and you push down. Now it's locked in, okay? Most important step. So I do first one on the ground, then what I do, I come up here and I do my second one right here. I'm not tied in yet. I'm not that far off the ground. I do my second stick. Once I get to my second stick, I come back down Lineman's belt. So, lineman's belt, just like any other tree harness, goes in your outside D loops. So that goes on around the tree. Now, what this allows me to do, just like any other tree stand, please don't be lazy and always lock your carabiners. This allows me, if I, as I'm going up the tree, I can be completely locked in 
hands-free putting up my other stakes on my platform. This right here is an ascender. It's a climbing ascender. It's called a rope man. It's basically a fancy prussic knot. So rather than having to use two hands, I can use a single hand to pull tension. So a prussic knot, you gotta have two hands. This, I wanna tension up. One hand, I'm closer to the tree. So this, I pull this. If I pull this, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna fall back because I can loosen the tension with one hand, see? So I like it better than a prussic knot. They're about 45 bucks, but they're worth it. So look at your rope mans. You can get them at REI, you can get them online. Another thing I want to show y'all here, hand me this. I tied paracord on the back of my platform. And there's a lot of companies that 3D print hooks that are made for these. You get them online. So I've got one here, I've got one on the other side. Those are, my, those are where my next two sticks go. So once I go up the tree, I go up one time. And then on the back, I've got two hooks. So when I'm on the ground and I'm ready to climb, I'll hook my platform in like this, and it hangs there as I go up the tree. Okay, let's say I'm four sticks up, about 16 to 20 feet off the ground. I'll pull this. This is just a preference of mine. A lot of people like to throw their buckle in. I don't like to throw my buckle in. I throw my tag in. So I use my knees, hold this, throw my tag in. Loop on. Start to tension a little bit. Like I was telling y'all, I always go to the right. You can go to the left if you want. I go to the right. It's personal preference. Tighten it down. Now, any of you, any of you um, hang on hunters know exactly what we're doing here. It's just hanging on a platform just like you would hang on. As you can see, I'm a little bit above my last stick, but not a ton. Push that down. Now when I get up into this, just like a hang on, it's gonna, it's gonna lock in. Okay, so next up is, we hand me my safety strap. So guys, I usually have my safety strap in this bag, but for this demonstration, John's gonna throw it to me. So, safety strap. Now if you look, like I told y'all, what do you got going on here? Hold up. One thing we had talked about earlier is pay attention to the lean of the tree. When you're finally in your platform, you want your platform against the lean, or I should say with the lean, not against the lean, because you want gravity to lean you away from the tree. Otherwise, you're gonna be like this, and it's, it's, you're not gonna be set up for success in a good hunt. So pay attention to the lean of the tree. I'm away. So. This right here is our safety belt, safety line, or your tether. This is all this is tethered. So this is called your tether technically. Um, we're used to calling them your safety belt on a, on a standard uh, hunt setup. So get that nice and tight now. What makes a saddle a saddle is this next part right here. This is called the bridge. Now, Tethered, they use AM steel, just like they do with their sticks. Other companies use other types of material, but they use AM steel. You clip in here, lock your carabiners. I always face my carabiner up. And because I'm left-handed, my rope man points off to the left, so I can tension up off to the left, okay? Now, once I get this on, where you place this is pretty important. I always go, my brother taught me this. He's been hunting out of a saddle a couple years more than me. It's always good to start off at forehead height. If you want to know where to start your safety line, a saddle, start off with forehead height. Get it right at your forehead level. And I always make sure before I undo this, that this is tight and I'm locked in and I'm in my bridge. So technically I'm in the saddle now. Now what I'm going to do, I don't need this anymore. We're gonna undo our lineman's belt. We're gonna put it back in our bag so it's with me, but out of the way. Now, some people keep this clipped in so they never risk dropping this. If you drop this, you're in, 
you're in for a hard afternoon getting out of a tree. So some people leave this in. I don't leave it in and I'll tell you why. So I tuck this all the way away. Close this, close this. I'm saddle hunting. This is another feature you're gonna need to hang all your stuff. This is just a belt that you tie around the tree. And all of our equipment, be it your bow, be it my binoculars, my rangefinder, my bag. I have carabiners that I clip into these. All my stuff's right here in front of me. This is another reason why hunting out of a saddle is superior to any other hunting setup because it's not behind me. Um, like it is in a traditional ladder stand or hang on. It's all behind you. You got to turn around to access it or it's sitting in your lap. This in the saddle, everything's right here in front of my face. I want to grab my grunt tube. I want to grab my bow. I want to grab my range finder. I want to grab my binoculars. It's all hanging on the tree right here. So I always hang this up. Now, the reason I said I undo my um, Lyman's belt for my Lyman loop, I know this is cheesy. I use it to rest my hands. I'm a fidgety person. I use, literally, I just hold it onto it like this and it gives me a place to put my hands. So I'm sitting here, and nothing's coming and you're just chilling and looking around. You have somewhere to put your hands. Personal preference thing, that's what I do. Okay, now let's talk about the benefits, the, the styles of hunting out of a saddle. So you can see here, this is your traditional sitting style. I'm tethered in, I've got constant tension and I'm just leaning against the tree. You can see I'm not standing on the platform, I'm just leaning on it like this, right? So this is why this right here is the saddle. You're like in a saddle, it's like a mini hammock, right? Let's say I wanna take a rest from this, okay? I just take this, tighten the tree, I stand up. I can lean against the tree. Let's say deer coming in and it's not a target buck, or it's not a doe and I'm not, doe, or it's a doe and I'm not doe hunting. I can literally stand here and lean against the tree. You're never gonna get this low profile in any other hunting setup. So I can sit here and lean against the tree and I'm tethered constantly, okay? Let's say I've got a buck or a doe coming from behind me. I'll loosen this up a little bit. I turn completely around. Now see this? Put it against my shoulder. I can lean out. I can lean out as hard as I want with my bow. I can draw and I can aim anywhere I need to and I'm tethered to the tree hunting behind me. You're never gonna get a safe shot off in a hang on or a ladder stand or a climber behind you. It's not possible without putting yourself in, in, at a risk of a fall or something like that. I've showed you hunting behind me. I'm a left-handed archer. I'm left eye dominant, left-handed. So my primary shooting lane is off to my non-dominant hand. So if you're a right-hander, your primary shooting lane, first and foremost, you want to respect the lane of the tree. Secondary, you want your shooting lane set up to your non-dominant side. So if you're a right-handed person, you're preferred shooting lanes are to your left for me my preferred shooting lanes are to my right just like this trail would be because I can just grab my bow right here draw back and I'm hunting just like this or I can do the same thing against the tree like this right secondary hunting lane is over my back because what I showed y'all flipping around real quick like this secondary shooting lane all back here your third shooting lane least preferred but still accessible is dominant side at like a you know uh, for me it'd be like my nine to eleven o'clock however it's still accessible these platforms are very angular by design and that's because every little angle is a foothold foothold here foothold there foothold there so what i can do is watch this i can go all the way around the tree and let's say i'm hunting with my bow i can get all the way around like this and I can shoot with my bow off to my non-preferred. Look, I'm tethered in the tree. I'm not slipping, I'm not sliding. I can use this. If that buck's coming in, I can have my bow. I can even be at draw and I can slide around, aim on and shoot. So you can hunt 360, 360 degrees around your tree in a saddle. I feel unbelievably safe because I'm tethered. There's constant tension. You don't get that in other setup. I'm very comfortable. This feels like a Eno hammock for the all's, those of y'all used camping hammocks. I literally feel like I'm in a hammock. I have no pressure points anywhere. So these are unbelievably versatile because they're lighter and smaller. They're unbelievably safe because you're constantly tethered in a tree. 
and they're unbelievably effective because you can hunt all the way around the tree. Personally, I'm sold. I'm gonna give saddle hunting a try, and that's despite the higher total cost of Wes's setup. Total cost of the saddle kit, sticks, platform, and rope mans came up to around $900, but they're certainly a lot lighter and more compact than my climber setup. Thanks to Wes for walking us through this, and thank you guys for being with us. We'll see you next time. God bless you.